Hey, everybody. I wanted to、uh, drop in, say hi, wish you all a happy new year, 2021. It is January 2nd, 2021. So it's 2-1, 2-1. Always some symmetry with the numbers and、um, welcome.、Uh, for new people, there's lots of material.、Um, Down the page, you got to scroll a little bit. But、uh, if you came in over the last two months, you came in to what is basically a pretty stock shelf in terms of understanding the eye of the needle material. I brought in、uh, a lot of the old material before we brought in this Patreon site and、um, attempted to bring as much to the table as possible in terms of value.、Uh, clearly, I'm not doing a lot of interviews right now. Some of that is、um, an effect of attempting to compile material, write material, gather the material that is being downloaded. And、um, I want to talk about where we are right now in time, where we are in space, and where we are in terms of understanding、um, some of the interwoven timelines and destinies that are working out. And a lot of it has to do right now, unfortunately, with politics and elections and decisions and lack of decisions and how our system is basically bifurcating, splitting. So, in the midst of the tumult of what has been occurring since November 3rd in the election, There are two realities. There's the reality that the election was decided. This really is the valley of decision.、Um, the way events play out a lot of times in reality has to do with the interaction of human consciousness in the time waves that are running inside of the simulation. All of it very difficult to parse because you're in a simulation. So the election is a good example. Of a running holographic insert, because there are two realities coexisting at the same time, interweaving, interchanging with probabilistic outcomes that are based on any number of factors that may or may not be in play, including factors that may be in play that are in background processes of the CPU running the simulation. So, here on January 2nd, four days away from what will be another level as we head down the pike towards the Senate and House convening and joint session of Congress to open the Electoral College decisions, wherein formal proclamation would be expected to be made inside the Senate by Vice President. And president of the Senate, Mike Pence. How all of this plays out right now, again, lots of X factors in the equation. Pence was、um, the recipient of a lawsuit this week by his own people, by、um, Representative Lewis Gomer of Texas, in an attempt to force the courts to open a window. For Pence to be able to decline receiving the votes that are secreted in the Electoral College ballots. Now, how all of this plays out is still up in the air. And it really, it really isn't as important what plays out as how it plays out. This is where we pay attention to details. Because we interact with The human consciousness stream, the pressures on the system, the system which is bringing forward at any given time actions and activities, decisions, responses inside of the simulation. Let me dogleg here for a minute. Don't be distracted by the term simulation. Simulation is the matrix, the construct, the reality stream that you're in. It is both real and not real at the same time. You are in it. You volunteered to be here. So, when we talk about decisions that are being made or in 
process. There's a giant processing that goes on in the reality streams, bearing in mind too, that all of this, if it could be, would be controlled inside the simulation by the Draco reptilian, Anunnaki, Archontic forces that constantly squeeze and pressure humanity. As we go through these processes, there is in an ongoing basis, constant threads of consciousness running off in the background. Those threads of consciousness move into the CPU, the processor of the grand decision machine. If you go back to the very early eye of the needles, we talk about the probable futures database, uh, the voice of God software, and how inside the simulation, all of these things are running that in effect, our decisions have great force and great velocity within the system in terms of how a reality stream plays out. So in this current scenario, I'm thinking more now about um, the man in the high tower, where if you follow that series, you come to understand that the conclusion of the Second World War, which in the fictional narrative line written by Philip K. Dick, was not won by the Allies, but was in fact won by the Nazis and the Japanese. Hence, hence creating a bifurcated United States largely occupied by the Nazis on the East Coast, the Japanese conquerors on the West Coast, and of course there's this neutral zone that sits in the middle in the Rocky Mountains. Now, Philip K. Dick wrote this in the 70s, at a time before the continuity of government was in effect, which created a second state government in bases underground and in mountains in Colorado. So there's a lot you can say about Philip K. Dick in terms of how he was somewhat prophetic in envisioning this and how the plot of the TV series, The Man in the High Tower, continued this. More importantly, what that series and what that original writing by Philip K. Dick showed you was that what we consider to be a deterministic outcome, what we consider to be in the French, the fait accompli, is not a done deal. That at any given time, we are living in and unraveling constantly, forming streams of information that have the ability to do, undo, or redo, much like the functions in your computer, the current processes of reality as we know it. Most of us don't understand that memory is very, very plastic, that what we remember and how we remember specific events change over time. The memories themselves are subject to edits. This of course goes back to Eye of the Needle 7, the editors, where we talked about some of the functions and means by which holographic inserts are dropped into our reality and given as a means to control and traumatically interrupt the natural flow of human events. The natural flow of human events are human events that occur organically out of the wellspring of human consciousness, human activity, and human desires. Um, how, what we dream, what we think, what we feel, how we act at any given time. The holographic insert is a real or artificial event that interrupts the narrative of both the individual and collective human consciousness and creates a means by which to divert, interrupt, edit, or superimpose on reality a specific outcome. So if we look now at the operations running over the course of 2020, 
COVID-19 is obviously huge. It is the largest event since the dropping of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And the reason for that is, is because it has had the ability to globally disrupt the consciousness of humanity. Whereas while 9-11 had a global impact, it wasn't trans-global in the sense that it directly impacted the people of planet Earth at one time and as one event. It was staged out over a very long period of time that began after that with a series of sequence of things that happened globally that created tensions, that created security concerns that then were staged implementation of controls that were put into the system. With COVID, much like Hiroshima, the impact of the reality was so deep and so traumatic on the consciousness of the collective that rapid change was much more accessible very quickly. And because we've never experienced the entire world, most 90% of the world being under controlled conditions like we have with COVID, we've never really experienced this level of control. So in this election running under conditions of COVID-19, and COVID-19 is very much what you would call a digital virus. Whether um, you've been impacted by it or not, whether you know people who have been impacted by it, whether you know of people who have been ill because people have been ill, there is something that makes people sick. There is something biologically that has been put into force. But in January, when I started looking at the videos that were being leaked by intelligence assets on the social media regarding what was going on and who won in China at that time, I said that, that then SARS Corona 2, as it was captured and characterized as COVID 19, was a mind virus. And this mind virus is electronically amplified and virally spread. There's that word again, viral, virally spread via electronic means. In other words, the communication of the disease, while it had an epicenter of infection, was transmitted electronically as a meme broadcast to the world, which became the vector for people to then begin to receive the transmitted disease. Now that's radical. A lot of people are gonna push back against that. But when you think about the global transmission of a single virus, across such a wide spectrum of geog geography, ethnic, ethnic groups, and isolated blow-ups, you understand that the rapid transmission of this virus was accomplished via transmission of mind control. That COVID-19 is the largest targeted disease that has ever been transmitted to humanity. And the vector for transmission of this disease, this malady, this virus, is via the electronic media. At the same time as we're dealing with COVID, we're dealing with 2020, a year which I think everybody had expectations of something happening. We certainly did here that that was creating the stage for something quite dramatic having to do with the elections, and especially the elections as regards a president as controversial, as colorful, and as swimming against the tide as Donald Trump is. Now, I cloak these statements by saying that um, nothing I, I'm going to say means to infer that I'm a fan of Donald Trump, that I'm a Republican, a conservative, a MAGA, a neocon, uh, a patriot. I look at this more clinically simply as the polarization that is going on. 
that the left has been infiltrated by the Communist Party. It was news maybe in 1952 that there has been a battle for the soul of both parties for over 70 years now is not news. That the ideology of Marxist, statist, socialist concepts versus the hyperbolic, evangelical, neocon, ultra right wing also were woven into the fabric of the political discussion, disregarding everything else that occurred in the middle, the middle ground. So the middle ground is the stratum of most people. The middle ground is where most of us live because most of us are not ideologically conservative or liberal so much as we have ethics, goals, boundaries, and a sense of morality and right and wrong that fits into the dynamic of politics, whereas politics is all about weaponizing thoughts and opinions. So the ultra left comes to represent the left, the ultra right comes to represent the right, and the polarization tears at the fabric of the middle. <clears throat> so where we are right now is that as I've gone out, as I've remote viewed, as I've consulted with my guides, I've tried to get a picture of what this looks like uh, 10 days from now, after what we will assume is the final decision. It is my sense that unlike almost anything I've seen in my life, this event is still open although windows are closing rapidly. It looks to me very much like <clears throat> the courts will not step in. There are no processes left to pull back an election, even an election that's demonstrably and documentedly as corrupt as this one. There isn't a way to reverse the U.S. election. At some point, it must be decided. By the way, if it would not be decided, the Speaker of the House, who is presently Nancy Pelosi, becomes the de facto President of the United States. So ponder that. There is a third way. What I see happening, the, the predominant light sits on any of about three to four different outcomes. The outcomes that I viewed selectively using probabilistic remote viewing <clears throat> and asking my guides constantly for feedback on this, because one of the things that I've come to understand is prediction, prophecy, foreshadowing is a dicey proposition at best because events shift constantly in a multi-dimensional array. So what is true now may not be true 24 hours from now. The strongest probability is at this point, Donald Trump will not prevail, that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be inaugurated on is it January 20th. And despite the best efforts of those who believe they're doing the right thing, this election will probably not be rolled back in any meaningful way. There will be a transfer of power but what happens next and what is building now is more interesting because it really is becoming a man in the high tower scenario. My guides have shown me situations where Donald Trump will effectively become the man in the high tower. <clears throat> Think about it. Think about the man in Trump Tower and what that means in terms of uh, a metaphor. So as Donald Trump leaves power, he effectively becomes a leader in exile, a very large populist movement, by the way, much larger, much more diverse and much more vocal than anything we've seen in the last 60 years of history, and perhaps that we've seen since the 1930s and the rise of Nazism. And I don't mean to compare Trump with Hitler, 
I compare this in terms of a, an analogy, a rough analogy, and maybe a mirror image of reality as well. The analogy that this president goes into exile. He goes back to New York or to Florida. Doesn't matter, the symbols still stand. In one place, he will be in a castle. In the other place, he will be in a high tower. Very secure fortress. Donald Trump has surrounded himself in, in the period of his four years as US president with his own people, some good, some bad, some horribly tragic. And in a lot of ways, what he has done is he has embraced the concept used by mob leaders of keep your friends close, your enemies closer. Thus, some of the bewildering choices made of people he brought into his administration and then summarily fired later, almost like burning through candidates on The Apprentice. So what Trump has done is he's shown you the facade of government by showing you that at any given time, it's a moving parade of figures across the screen, that the only constant is change itself. And he, being the man in the high tower, has always kept the tunnel, the fortress, the opening to the other reality very close, while at the same time leaking a lot of information, much as in the, the series, which you can go watch on, on Amazon as well, the Man in the High Tower series, there are all these events going on on the ground and the constant quest to locate another film reel in this case, we'll say another video, another cache of information, another Q drop. Interesting, Q has gone silence since the election. But always in the background, there's another reality that waits. And in a lot of ways, what goes on in the Man in the High Tower series is this puzzle hunt, this search for the clues, for the connectors, for the people. And in the series, real people die. Real people were lost. Relationships are crushed. There are tragedies, there are victories, there are sorrows, there's love, there's passion, there's hate. All of these things that occur in the stream of life, which is our foreground, our own personal struggles, trials, passions. And the background, which is the film strip of the world at large, which continues to move around us and behind us and would, if it could, envelop us. But the reality is that at any given time, it can turn on a pin. Sorry for that. Um, phone rang. I didn't take the call. That happens every time I do one of these, by the way. Isn't that amazing? Um, so I'm trying to do these without editing, which is kind of a nightmare, given that at any given time, there's interruptions. So reality can turn on a pin. A decision made somewhere randomly inside of the machine, the construct, the matrix, however you choose to view this, can shift a delicate mechanism of decision in very interesting ways. So when we look out on the landscape of future probabilities, at any given time, the only thing we see are potentials potential, probable futures, probable realities, probable outcomes. The three scenarios are A, Trump would prevail. Trump would at the last minute overturn the election. This obviously has to occur now within the context of the Congress. No small feat given the process is very narrow. That Biden prevails, Biden is elected, or that the electoral process fails so dramatically <clears throat> due to corruption that no decision is rendered by this election, which according to the 20th or 18th amendment, I don't remember. So if you know, put it in the comments, 
we wind up with an interim government helmed by the Speaker of the House. All but the first of those probabilities plays into the scheme to insert illegitimate power and power that does not represent the mainstream views of Americans or the people of the world at large, and largely installs a really almost military type in their own government, something we've never seen in this country before. We've been close a few times, as I understand history, I believe we were close at the time of Thomas Jefferson as well. But we've never seen the failure of an electoral system before in this country. And this clearly is the systemic breakdown of the electoral system under digital electronic conditions. Because what we're talking about in terms of the election was infiltration by foreign agents, foreign interests into the election via electronic voting. And so again, like COVID, we're dealing with the fallout of a digital world and a digital world which now is being increasingly controlled by algorithms and increasingly has the ability to alter reality, to basically take down the mechanisms of systems which were thought out hundreds of years ago and which have functioned for hundreds of years, whether it's economic, political, social, or whatever. Under electronic conditions, all these systems are failing. <clears throat> In scenario number two, which is the Biden prevails, which I kept coming back to as I was viewing them and getting a number of indicators about as being the strongest probability, let's put it that way, that under current circumstances, that is the most likely outcome, whether you like that or not. That in fact, the invocation that Joe Biden prevailed in the election, that he amassed the, the, the popular vote according to the outcomes that were published and the electoral vote as a result of the publishing of the popular vote means that that's the strongest outcome at this point. That outcome has within it a number of variables, none of which, in my mind, and from what my guides have shown me, <clears throat> are good for the country, nor are they good outcomes for Joe Biden. It appears as though within a two-year period from 2021 to 2023, which is an inter interesting time period if you've gone through the eye of the needle material. Somewhere in that two-year period, it breaks down, it falls apart. It looks to me like, in viewing it, I continually saw a black shadow over Joe Biden. And in trying to interpret that, I was sort of pushed, tilted, shown. It will either be his removal by impeachment, resignation, or death. I have also, as I did in the, um, the, the last download that I put up onto Patreon, which was Song of the Moon, discussed this dark feminine coming in with the dark Aquarian as well. Interpretively, I will tell you that that has Kamala Harris written all over it, that the real target of all of this and the intended beneficiary is not Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a drop in. This is a payoff for 40 years of Joe Biden successfully being a puppet of the new world, archontic, off world, alien, mobs, and all of the other malevolent factors, Joe Biden has served the dark forces well. Joe Biden coveted the presidency. But this is a guy that didn't even work hard to be elected. It appears as though he always believed he was entitled to it. 
And after the resounding defeat of Hillary Clinton, the forces that orchestrate elections were put into place to enable him to secure his victory regardless of any popular outcome. COVID-19, as Donald Trump has said, was the pretext for fixing the election. Now, having said that, there are shadows all over the 2016 election. I've talked about this. How after 1 a.m. Eastern time on election night in 2016, the charts on CNN's ticker suddenly moved away from favoring Hillary Clinton with the Electoral College to suddenly very rapidly moving towards Donald Trump. And in fact, many people have suggested that the mechanism in that election, not dissimilar to the mechanisms used in this election, was similarly rigged. The fact of the matter is, <clears throat> you do not live in a, a democracy, regardless of where you live. You don't live in a republic. You live in a world that is a stage of constantly shifting forces, spiritual forces, metaphysical forces, forces of dark and light playing as backgrounds of our unconsciousness outworkings. So I wanted to toss this out now. And if I get clarity, I'll post more. My sense is we go with <clears throat> probable outcome number two. We're looking at a Biden presidency for a very short time. That that presidency will be turbulent. It will be a battleground. You will have the man in the high tower, Donald Trump, running basically <clears throat> a presidency in exile and a very fractious, divisive, asymmetrical civil war situation here in America and a world equally split because unfortunately America dominates the world scene and decisions that get made here ripple now across most of the planet. So those are some concepts, ideas, outcomes. I really just wanted to put something out that was fresh, something that was insightful and something to communicate that there is a process going on. If you lean on the external processes, you may feel hopeless, you may feel powerless, don't. Set your intentions for good outcomes, set your heart for what is best for you and those closest to you and for what is the greatest good for all humanity. Maintain that as a vision, meditate on it, dream about it, and put your energies out there as a means to deflect back all of the dark energy emanating from this matrix construct. So I'm just gonna leave it there for now. I just wanted again to say, blessed new year, welcome to 2021. It will be a continued ride through the eye of the needle and we'll be here all the way to discuss it, to look at it, and to share it with you. This is Off Planet Radio. This is the Eye of the Needle. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is inside you. For those of you who have seen the video that I did, The Man in the High Tower, which was me substituting the word tower for castle in the TV series, but it was because of the vision behind that show where I kept seeing a tower and um, obviously over the last few weeks a lot of the things that have occurred since that January 2nd video have come to pass um, Donald Trump is not president of the United States at least officially Joe Biden has been installed and Mr. Trump has left the scene and as of this week, he has announced the office of the former president operating out of his Florida location to continue the work of activism on, as he says, behalf of the American people, hence at least partially fulfilling the man in the high tower, high castle predictions made in the January 2nd show 
regarding uh, what was going on before the events of January 6th and obviously January 20th in the interim, the rollout, the so-called insurrection, the second impeachment round, and um, what I will call the virtual inauguration of an American president, Joe Biden. This is Off Planet Radio.